welcome to the Nordic Mythology Podcast. I'm Daniel Farron, co-owner of the company Horns of Odin, and I'm joined, as always, by Dr. Matthias Nordvig. Hello. So we are joined by Ed Gamester, who is a, uh, let's see, actor, modeler, model, uh, a wrestler, um, Guildsman. A master of the guild, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm uh, trying to think of what else. else I, I, I'm add. sure there's some other stuff in there. Lift, lifter of heavy things. Yes. Um, oh, welcome yeah. to the show, Ed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for having me on. Um, it's a genuine an honor with the, the, the long list of guests you guys have, have had and the conversations you've had. Um, yeah, it's a true honor to be it's like the outcast one. <laughs> he just uh, turns up and no one's really sure what he does, but here he is anyway, and he's gonna he's gonna do his best. <laughs> uh, you are you're more than welcome. Um, every time I I've kind of asked the question on the Instagram or on the Horns of Instagram, you know, who do you want to see? Your name always seems to pop up, and that I mean that's a good thing. That's very is is flattering, but I think it's just because people want to know what the hell I'll do. Like, how will he tread water? How will he keep up? <laughs> What's he got up his sleeve? I mean, I mean, you're a character in no uncertain terms. <laughs> I think one way or another, you know, anybody who's ever met you, you are. I, I think I could say you're one of my favorite people out oh. there. You every time I see you, we have a we have a good laugh, we have a good time. Thank you. Oh, that's definitely true. I have had an excellent time every time we've hung out. Um, although the last time we hung out, was it the last time that you split your head open and bled everywhere? Or was that the time before? I, I think that and, that. and to be honest, that's where your uh, strong man days came in to help. Because oh, I'm, I'm not a small human. And I think you kind of just picked me up and looked after me like uh, cradled me. <laughs> I, I, I held you to my breast. Um, <laughs> I walked you out of that cave and, and I told you with all honesty, Dan... Like, mm-hmm. it's not that big of a deal. This is not that big of a hole in your head. And I meant it. Uh, and But it was only because I had only seen the smaller of the two holes. And when we got <laughs> you to the road and I saw the torch in your head and saw the actual hole, that is when I, that is why I panicked for real. Mm-hmm. No, and I, I don't remember much about the night because um, I was a little bit drunk. But I remember what? being like, no, no, it's fine. I'll, I'll go to bed. I'll, I'll sleep it off. And I just remember looking at you and you looking at me and being like, done, very, like very serious. And you're not the most serious of people. And you just, this had this look on your face and like, no, you have to go to hospital. And I was like, you will die. Okay. <laughs> if Ed's telling me I have to go, then I have to go. That's that's actually, that is fair. I have a fairly high bar for when I think people, myself included, should go and get medical help. But you were, uh, I mean, there was blood everywhere. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> sounds very dramatic <laughs> anyway so thank you so much for having me on the podcast i'm glad that you survived uh long enough to have me here um, <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> so um i mean we, we quickly said you are part of the guild and i'm sure a lot of people want to know what what the guild is me included to be honest M- me also i think i want to know <laughs> ah. what the guild is more than anyone because i am part of it um you know, I get asked this question quite a lot because I very rarely actually explain it. Um, and so I'll do my best, uh, the concise version, as I believe. Um, the Guild is a commitment to the authenticity of yourself, um, which I believe is not only something that's very difficult to achieve, um, but is something that is sorely lacking in, uh, in modern culture. Uh, I believe that it's far easier for us to sort of... Um, dress ourselves up as people and things that we're not because it makes it easier to fit in and makes it easier to achieve um, societal goals that are given to us rather than things that we actually genuinely want. Um, So the guild was essentially my own breakdown in my early 20s (laughs) when I realized (laughs) this is what I was doing and it was not a life or a lifestyle I wanted to be living. And so I just basically threw everything away and was like, I'm not doing any of this anymore. I'm going to only, I'm going to live, um, as, as truthfully as, as I can do. Um, and I realized that the best way of doing that was to essentially establish m- my own value system and then stick to that value system, whether or not it was the right thing to do or not. <laughs> it was more a case of having a set of, a set of principles by which to live. Um, and obviously, you know, like all principles, they can change and fluctuate as time goes on. But the idea was to commit to something greater than yourself in order to not get like dragged down by your own, you know, humanity and failures, which of which I have so many. So, um, <laughs> <Don't> yeah, <be> <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> uh, yes, yes, we do. And that's what I think is so great, right? Uh, you, everyone has this sort of feeling that you need to be sort of wonderful or clever all the time. Um, and now we have keyboard warriors and the chaos of social media, which is essentially everyone trying to be the cleverest uh, mm. and pretend like they all know everything. Whereas in fact, we're all idiots. Well, all of us are idiots. <laughs> Even Matthias, he seems to know everything. Oh, yeah, he, and, he and I'm definitely is. an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So the, the guild is like the admission that you're an idiot, and then you, so you may as well go be an idiot because we're all idiots. Um, so it's sort of, it's, it's formalized idiocy in some ways. Um, <laughs> I like go. it. <laughs> yeah, it's like brilliant. It. <laughs> it, it, it sounds fun. It sounds like a fun, fun bunch of people. It is painful most of the time, but also very fun. No, I think that, that's a good point, though. It's so easy to kind of want to fit in or do what society wants you to do. And I think we've all probably fallen foul to it at some point in our lives, kind of, oh, well, is this normal? I should do this and not necessarily do what you want to do. For sure. But sure, I think the greatest irony is that we spend so much time trying to fit in um, with, with other people. But the fact is, if you just change the people, that you're with, then mm-hmm. you'll fit in by just doing what you want to do anyway. So if you're if by you're not fitting in by doing what you want to do, just change the people you're hanging out with, and then all of a sudden you'll fit in. That's the principle of the guild. If you by doing what you want, you're not fitting in with people. Find different people. That's your guild. You, you don't have to be like me or do what I do. Just can, but instead, because we 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 still have these weird small culture values. Mm-hmm. Um, when actually these days you can hang out with anyone you want anywhere in the world. So do that instead, you idiot. <laughs> no, I, I I I like the sound of this. This is a this is a good strategy for you know finding your way in 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 the post 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 modern world at this point. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I think and, so. And to be honest, I think it's going to fit well into the bulk of the episode, which is going to be us looking through Odin's advice in in Havamal. And I feel like that kind of fits well into. Into it. it's like we almost planned it but didn't because none of us actually knew what you did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, also speaking as a scholar of Old Norse mythology and all that stuff, Odin was definitely an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If, I mean, the, the, you you couldn't be more right. I mean, obviously, because you are actually a scholar, whereas I am a buffoon. Um, but that's what it attracted me to the the Old Norse myths in the first place was I could relate to these gods because they're they're. They're moronic. They do stupid mm-hmm. things all the time. They're selfish. They're always on misadventures and screwing each other over. And I, th- I thought that that's more like people than the the other representations of the gods that I'd, I'd read about. And yeah, they're very so, human like rather than godlike, for sure. Which I mean, if you're going to write, if the only purpose of these things is as stories to be inspirational, be inspired by real things, right? Don't. Mm-hmm. It's, it's difficult to be inspired by someone who's who's flawless because you can't relate to them. I suppose. I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, as I said before, we, we jump into, like, say, the bulk of the episode. Um, Matthias, what have you been up to? I know you've been having some some fun. You said you're in a safe house right now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm in a safe house. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm currently sitting in a basement somewhere in the Chicago suburbs, uh, quarantining uh, because I need to go to the uh, consulate. What is what do you call it? General Consul, Consulate General, um, um, the Danish uh, represent, representation here in Chicago, because that's where I can renew my passport. So, um, yeah, they they're is that like the closest one to yeah, where you were, I guess. Either that or L.A. So, um, so like I'm I'm like stuck right in the middle between these two, and you know the the drive from from Colorado uh, out here to Chicago is uh, is pretty much the same distance as like hamburg to uh moscow so <laughs> so far <laughs> that is so far did it in 17 hours that sounds incredibly fast that is incredibly fast not on it, foot it, i assume <laughs> oh, absolutely not. It, it, well you know so basically what you do is that you you do the american way of crossing the country get in the car don't sleep a lot of red bull and just like mm. zoom Monkey nice. navigated all the way. Why and, did you need to renew your passport? Was has it just expired? Or? Yeah, it's just it's uh, gonna expire soon. So I, I want to be ahead of the game with all of that stuff. And um, yes. I thought you perhaps you you know had it destroyed or something in an act of no no not, <laughs> <laughs> not to, you're banished from the land. That. 
<laughs> not yet. <laughs> he, could, he could be coming with some stuff on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Banned from Denmark. <laughs> Banned from Denmark. Well, yeah, I'm definitely going to uh, get chased with by by villagers with pitchforks and torches at some point in Denmark. <laughs> considering I think all the like shit a... I say about them, <laughs> isn't that just how they celebrate birthdays in Denmark? I, I hear that's <laughs> that is part of it. Yes, <laughs> just... or anything. Well, we do have some really cruel um, traditions. Um, so if you when you turn uh, 21, right, you uh, and if you're not married. You get doused in cinnamon. And... I so wondered where that was going. Then I was like, <laughs> a set on fire or something. I was like, yeah, yeah, close, close. So, so <laughs> this is like an old. Uh, actually, it's a is a is a remnant from like the uh, like early modern, late medieval spice trade, where the spice traders they would would be unmarried because they would be traveling uh, far all the time and and so for some reason that just stuck in denmark so if you are like 25 and, and unmarried your friends will tie you up uh to a like a lamp post or something like that and then they will like take up like a bucket of cinnamon and <laughs> you can find pictures on that on the internet <laughs> it is a real that, thing i mean Mike is going to have to definitely put them in the Instagram post when he, <laughs> when he posts this episode up of somebody getting covered in cinnamon. What is the name? It must have a wonderful um, Danish name. Oh, uh, l- let me just think for a second. Um, it so... might be the most bizarre thing I've ever heard in my life. And I mean, I've heard some pretty weird stuff, but that's, so we do. that's unusual. We do have the term, uh, uh, so for somebody who's unmarried at 30, um, is a, yeah, there you go. Uh, what well, this in also... the hell? <laughs> so this is for the, for the oh, people, this guy's who are, on fire. For people who are watching this. It does look like people are on fire. <laughs> oh, this guy's getting it right in the balls. <laughs> that looks oh. like a fire extinguisher. Of... It is. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah, it is. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Um, this is also a custom with pepper when you're 30, and that's where we have. The... <laughs> this feels like when people get married and there's like something for every year, like paper, flowers, <laughs> cotton, and it's like just the years that you are not married in Denmark, you have something else thrown at you. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, 30 is only five years later. I mean, you've only just been, you've probably only just got the cinnamon out of your hair by that point, and then all of a sudden you're peppered. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's not surprised you're not getting married. You're covered in cinnamon. <laughs> right? I mean, it's got to be hard. Like, <laughs> is that is that ground pepper or is it like whole peppers, like a stock <laughs> situation where you just left out in the village? So I, I assume... So the thing is, that in recent years, the, 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 the pepper tradition has changed a little bit. And um, what they do instead is that they still, like, harass you and haze you in some way or another. But... but, but Instead of actually uh, peppering you, um, maybe they also pepper you. Uh, it, it really depends on where you are in the country, but but they will they, they will like create they, they will take big um, oil barrels, um, paint it black, and then uh, um, uh, then like fashion a giant uh, pepper grinder out of them and then place it in your front yard. It's like you know as tall as your house kind of scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you, you could have said anything at that point, and I wouldn't yeah, be no. surprised. <laughs> you get an oil barrel, and you make it into the shape of a flamingo, and then you roll it down, <laughs> down the high street, and everyone has to jump over it, and some get crushed. Obviously, you're not married. Yeah, why not? <laughs> no, I it's definitely not respect it's, this. Proper hillbilly traditions. I love them. This is, this is where I come from. <laughs> that, I, I mean, that's brilliant. I, th- I feel like in the UK, we must have some weird traditions but oh, i can't yeah. think of anything quite like that we have some <laughs> tremendously racist ones but i'm pretty sure you guys have some as well because <laughs> yeah awful ones yeah. That should have been eliminated many years ago but you just come to some small village and they're like oh it's thursday it's you know <laughs> it's actual racism day <laughs> yeah, yeah. it may yeah. as well be yeah may as that's well true be. unfortunately they'll still exist yeah, oh, yeah. so with the um, with, with the cinnamon, it's it's actually uh, incredibly uh, uh, unpleasant and painful because uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to take a full spoon of cinnamon in your mouth. 
you can't I, I saw the like the, the challenge online. Yeah. So imagine just getting doused like those images we just saw. Yeah, I feel like you're gonna breathe some of that in as well. So yeah. It's... I guess it depends how long the dousing goes on for. Do you have to hold your breath? Well, because... I mean you're tied to a lamppost in oh, some yeah. cases. <laughs> I mean uh, how much is cinnamon as well? It's like a full bucket of it. That's what I've been thinking. These are spice merchants, though. They got cinnamon for days. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, I did not expect this might be the weirdest intro to a podcast we've had so far. So you're ticking all the boxes I expected, to be honest, Ed. (laughs) I'm just a conduit from that was entirely (laughs) Matthias. There's not me. I I will own that one. (laughs) So so for me today, I went up to a little place called Thor's Cave, which is in the Peak District. I have no idea why it's there or why it's called Thor's Cave. Um, it's a wonderful limestone cave up on a up on a hill. And Matthias, I was wanting to ask you if you knew anything about it or at least maybe why this little place in the middle of England is just called Thor's Cave. Yeah, so so judging from what you uh what you sent me in um these these uh um uh, these uh what is it like some some local person with a with interest in uh in the um the the place right they have gathered um some some information and uh put it on a website and um judging from that uh it kind of looks like uh maybe it's something that you know in older times had um another name that sort of like through uh, you know the course of time has come to uh, resemble Thor as a um, uh, as like a place name. That's 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 my immediate thought on, on this. I mean, okay. I but but I don't have any um, I don't have like a, a a real good understanding of it to be honest. Um, it is certainly yeah. a very interesting uh, uh, site, and yeah, it was like so my immediate thought was because you could sit in there, and if it was quite stormy, you would have. Oh. this beautiful view of the lightning but i mean that was kind of just what came to my mind but i guess that because i think i think when i was reading they said that they found some remains in there some tools but these were much 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 earlier than the viking age so i think at some point some people did live in there or at least have it inhabit it for a while hmm. yeah and so the thing is, I mean, the the etymology that you find on Wikipedia that I'm seeing uh, is that that it might come from uh, from from the name Thor. Um, but I I, I am uh, I'm very skeptical about that. It's it's you know when it start the the the, the wiki uh, info says it's uncertain, mm-hmm. but it might come from this. Um, lacking evidence and other hypotheses and so on so well in english um the word tor means like a like a rocky hill mm-hmm. um it looks like a fairly rocky sort of a hilly cave yes. so maybe it, it, it was is. you call tor's cave and and that morphed in yeah, yeah. Tor's cave that's I mean, all caves are pretty hilly and rocky to be fair i mean that's the definition of a cave <laughs> i mean i had to, i had flashbacks going in there it was, oh, uh, no. <laughs> Sarah had to hold my hand. <laughs> was the floor, happen again. Was the floor at least even and not oh, covered no, no, in meat? Not at all. It was um, for, because it was extremely wet from the the ta- from the rain kind of coming down over it. It was really smooth and slippy. So I was uh, tentative on my feet. I was like Bambi, kind of just trying to keep I'm- my uh, keep my foot in. I've seen you do that. I've seen you do that particular walk slash dance. Um, <laughs> the last time, the the floor was slick with mead, and that's what that's what upended you. I'm sure, yeah. And mud. And mud, yeah, yeah. And alcohol, I think. Yes. It, again, I, I'm going to just have to repeat that it is so Thor-like to to go uh, into caves and get hurt. Like that's <laughs> that's a very Thor thing to do. <laughs> yes. I mean, didn't he's... didn't. Didn't Thor get like a piece of whetstone stuck in his head? Is that yeah, so and wasn't he that in there for like a good few, a good while? It wasn't like one story. Wasn't he in there for like? Well, years? so the, the story goes that it, 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 this is in his duel with 
the, the giant Krungnir who has a, a heart of stone and a head of stone and a shield and weapon of stone and all that stuff. And um, his uh, uh, Krungnir's weapon is this big flint rock that he uh, throws at Thor and Thor has destroys it with his hammer and the story goes that this is uh this is the origin of, of all the uh, the whetstone that you find around the world and um and one of them got lodged in uh, in thor's head and they couldn't get it out so technically he's supposed to still have it there okay. um so mm-hmm. yeah i mean that's that's again very thor to to have your head split open by a rock i'm not, I'm not uh, saying i'm thor or anything you can, <laughs> everyone can make their own mind up but well i mean well, the evidence speaks for itself exactly yeah. that's what i was thinking was was, was Runge, uh, his throwing stone is that is was that the one that um that some people think represents Valknut or the other way around. Um, his heart. The, the, it's description. Oh, it's his heart. Right, yes, it's right, his right. heart because there's like this weird description. Snowy gives us this description of like it's weirdly pointy or something mm. like that. And people have compared that to um, what is, you know, these three triangles that are yeah. interlaced um, that we find in, in imagery from uh, primarily from Gotland um from the 800s and on on those picture stones these very elaborate yeah. picture stones they have there um whether or not there's any any crossover that's another uh, uh I question i never really i thought it from the stuff i'd read i hadn't seen anything to suggest it it, 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 it seemed interesting but it didn't seem particularly convincing no and i am not a scholar <laughs> No, I wouldn't say that it's particularly convincing. Actually, it's um, there's a lot of guesswork involved here. Uh, uh, actually, our uh, previous guest, Brute Norse, um, he hmm. he actually has an article about it on uh, on his blog. So uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the Valkner article is really good. I think that was, like yeah. I said, that was the first thing I read of his, and he's he works up to the name. You know, brute. He's pretty brutal in his in the article and i know some people don't like it but it is what it is and he is very honest in what we know about the actual symbol um, and we'll give it a read yeah do no do no. um yeah should we jump into the bulk of the episode which i i'm pretty excited about so we're gonna yeah, let's do it we're gonna look at odin's kind of advice from Havamal. We're going to speak about it and see how and if it relates to modern times and how we can interpret it today. Brilliant. So, Matthias, is it just a certain section of Havamal? Do you want to like maybe explain what Havamal is, how, mm-hmm. how, it, how it's broken up? So, Havamal is the longest Eddic poem we have. And just to give you an idea of what Eddic poetry is, Eddic poetry is uh, a different is actually a compilation of different kinds of poetry uh, different kinds of a meter poetic meter that um, that um, we find in several manuscripts the the bulk is from the codex regius um, from 1270 so that's actually later than when Snorri Sturluson is writing his prose edda or Snorri Zetta um, and uh, these some of these poems definitely are much older. Um, they, uh, the, the primary one, the first one in the in the Codex Regius is the uh, Verlusbauer, the Prophecy of the Seeress, and that one was probably composed in the late 900s or early thousands, like right around there. Um, the other ones come after. Um, Halvamal is sort of like a learned uh, piece of advice. It's, uh, it's Odin is some kind of scholar, some kind of wizard, and some kind of like a traveling uh, merchant even. Uh, like the, he's also a uh, flaneur. Uh, he's smoozing the ladies and all that stuff. And um, was that, Sorry, was that flaneur? Yes, flaneur. <laughs> um, really? <laughs> You use that in English, right? Yeah, <laughs> like all the time, every day. I, <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I just wanted to like conjure up these images of uh, 19th century France with like a uh, scarf and I don't know stuff. This like is that. always how I imagine Odin, right? In a cravat. <laughs> yes, a cravat, <laughs> exactly. Um, and um, and this is the longest poem, so it's a, it's also that should tell you that it's probably really important. Um, scholars 
have later on thought that it was a combination of different poems. So they're all mashed into one. Um, the, the, the biggest uh, 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 split is uh, stipulates that there are six different poems in it. Um, some might actually know uh, uh, parts of Havamal is like the rune poem or the runatal, uh, because it has been called that by certain scholars, but it's all one poem, um, 164 stanzas. And, um, and it's like this interesting compilation of, 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 basic everyday uh, life advice um some some weird uh i don't know if it's advice it's just like shit talking about women like oh, he's got it's yeah. really interesting this odin got burnt that's very obvious here yeah. and he's like whining about that in, in in like a couple of stanzas he whines a lot odin does he does does he, he is a bit of a bitcher <laughs> like, it could just be the person who who created the uh the poem was that way i was like you know what i'm gonna uh, get my own back as speaking from odin oh you mean like plato and socrates like plato <laughs> just decides to represent socrates as being an a-hole yeah exactly <laughs> that's exactly the uh example i was going to yeah. use oh, <laughs> <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth honestly uh, what can i say i'm a, I'm a flaneur <laughs> That might be my favorite word now. Yeah, I, don't <laughs> <know>. right. <laughs> I don't even know what it means. It just sounds nice. <laughs> it means man you know what it means. Come on. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I honestly have never heard it before. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 anyway, so 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 the next thing to happen is um, like after after he's been whining about how he got burnt, um, then then he go on to like straight up Gandalf stuff, where he's like uh, a wizard who can you know stop an arrow mid air and like kung fu and I don't know what. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it right now. I understand this. <laughs> Odin just gets progressively more shit faced as he goes on in the poem. <laughs> So he starts off trying to give you sage advice, and he's like, oh, "This bitch, you fucker, just screw me over, man." I'd say, "Yeah, you never trust a woman." Also, I can stop arrows. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just—it's clear, it's obvious. He's just getting drunk as he goes Actually, through. It. You know what? I think that's a great reading of that poem. He's getting progressively more and more shit faced. I mean, that's also yeah. how it starts, right? He comes in, mm -hmm. he's like, hey, everybody, I'm some traveler. Uh, could I, like, you know, sit by the fire? Can I have uh, something to drink, you know, and uh, get cozy? And then he starts, like, warning people. He's like, <laughs> yeah, okay, so you shouldn't get too drunk when you hang out in the crowd that you don't know. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking from personal experience, that in the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's the great irony of the poem. Is he starts off being like, "Don't trust strangers or drunks," and then by the end, he's just like, "I can, I know the runes. I hang from a tree. I am my own father." <laughs> it's obvious. I know a drunk when I see one. I'm not a scholar of many things, but I tell you that I know a drunk from personal experience. Oh, sadly, that, is, yes. that is so on point. Damn it! How did I not see that? Like that makes so much more sense. Of course, it does. Live. So when this comes up in your next thesis, <laughs> yeah. the drunken Odin thesis, people will be like, "My God!" But that's gamester and gamester. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Exactly. Should we uh, jump into the uh, the actual reading of it and let's discuss discuss sure. some of the topics? Yeah. See where we end up. I can't wait for this. I'm so excited. <laughs> You want me to do, to read a couple of stances and um, just from the beginning, or uh... yeah, we can, okay. and we'll just jump in where we hear something mm -hmm. worth discussing, I guess. Yeah. So we start with stanza one, and it goes: All the doorways before one enters should be looked around, should be spied out. It can't be known for certain where enemies are sitting in the hall ahead. Blessed be the givers. A guest has come in. Where is he going to sit? He's in great haste. The one who by the log stack is going to try his luck. Mm. Fire is needful for someone who's come in and who's chilled to the knee. Food and clothing are necessary for the man who's journeyed over the mountains. Water is needful for someone who comes to a meal. A towel and a warm welcome, a friendly disposition if he could get it, speech and silence in return. This is, I think, one of my favorite things 
about the the old poems and the old um as we were talking about before the value system of small communities which is like right from the outset you know the very first stanzas are specifically about hospitality and mm -hmm. and like blessed be the givers it's not like it's almost like you are um it's good for you to get a guest because then you can like show the virtue of hospitality. It's all about, you know, give him your clothes and your food. And, um, and actually this is, this is an opportunity for you to show how virtuous you are by being a good host. And I think, I think that's lovely because that's one of the, the, the small community values that I think you experience when you visit, you know, villages or foreign countries that we tend to lack in modern culture a bit more where we have this vast global community but you mm -hmm. never really get that opportunity to to show your own ability and hospitality by welcoming someone into your house when all you can do is especially not the minute people. yeah <laughs> <laughs> very <laughs> illegal not, certainly not the minute but that you know that's bang on because even even just down to i don't think people share anymore as well people are so kind of introvert and want to keep everything to themselves and it's mine 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 oh what you know mm. it, they're so worried of somebody else stealing their idea or stealing something or it just feels like everybody's gone inwards rather than wanting to well, share I mean, with people and look after each other there's something about this these uh, you know fleeting interactions that we have with people in like big cities and all that stuff right um it, very little of that is uh, it ever um you know, is it, there, there, there comes a lot of suspicion with those kinds of interactions, and and there's there are no ties that are established. Like nobody is 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 responsible for much much more than that moment. Mm -hmm. Then you can go on in 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 each mm -hmm. direction, yeah. um, and as long as uh, uh, nobody screwed up completely, uh, uh, then 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 everybody you know gets out of that situation unscathed, so to speak, yeah. right? And yeah, it could be just. I guess you could do something, and you just that asshole on the bus earlier exactly this, and you're probably never going to see them again whereas if it was a small community it's you have to look each other in the face every day mm -hmm. and they know if you've been a, a cunt or not exactly yeah right yeah there's a there's a whole amount of um being held accountable that actually being in a, in a smaller community or like any actual physical community mm -hmm. um Whereas, like you say, there's, you could you could be as much of a douchebag as you want on the internet, and no one will ever hold you accountable for it. Which mm. is why so much of our life is spent arguing with trolls. Um, so we've gone from fighting trolls to arguing with trolls uh, over the course of about a thousand years. Pesky <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> trolls. Yeah, it's always going to be the issue. But I, I really, I really like that as a starting point. Like you said, like Havamal is such a long poem and therefore important. Yet the whole thing opens with him, you know, a bit. Uh, a call to arms regarding hospitality and, mm -hmm. and absolutely yeah i love that yeah, yeah shall i go on let's carry on please yeah. okay i'm loving so, it so we're now at uh stanza five and it goes wits are needful for someone who wanders widely anything will pass at home he becomes a laughing stock the man who knows nothing and sits among the wise about his intelligence no man should be boastful rather ca uh, cautious of mind when he uh, when a wise and silent man uh, comes to a homestead, blame seldom befalls the wary, for no more dependable friend can a man ever get than a store of common sense. The careful guest who comes to a meal uh, keeps silent, um, with hearing finely attuned. He listens with his ears and looks uh, about with his eyes, so every wise man spies out uh, what's ahead he's lucky the man who can get himself praise and goodwill very difficult it is when a man lays claim to what's in another's breast he's lucky the man who keeps in himself praise and wit while he lives for bad advice men have often received from another's breast no better a burden a man bears on the road than a store of common sense Better than riches it will seem in an unfamiliar place, such is the resort of the wretched. No better burden a man bears on the road than a store of common sense. No worse journey provision could he carry over the plain than over much drinking of ale. <laughs> it isn't as good as it is said to be ale for the sons of men. The more a man drinks, the less he knows about his own mind. 
<laughs> and now, now we see the first shred of evidence that Odin is getting drunk. Yeah, he's right. Very like he starts off being like, "You must be welcoming to people." Like, blessed is he, like very Jesus. Blessed is he who gets to welcome others to his breast. And then five minutes later, he's like, "But I tell you one thing: you shouldn't drink. <laughs> it's not so good that's, ale. People that's say the hospitality. It's, good. it's not so good. You don't want that ale. Here, I'll take it from you. It's not as good as you. <laughs> let, let me let me make sure you. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 I'll look after this ale for you. <laughs> so they, were, they, were too, they were too nice to him. They gave him too much. Yep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I like Bye. I like the emphasis on common sense as well. Yeah. I feel like that's something we are lacking in modern times. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean there's a he and he says, you know, a couple of things about what, what is uh, uh common sense and I think the, the the core of it is to always be cautious with what you do. Mm. Like just don't don't overreach you know in in different ways like that's that seems to be sort of a general thing that he comes back to again and again um and that that you know in my opinion that's sort of like uh, it comes down to something that we are definitely lacking nowadays broadly in society um humility mm. mm-hmm these people yeah. who, who who came up with this seem to be a little more a little more humble about their abilities, a little less boastful, a little less mm. of uh, I could definitely handle this la 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 you know yeah, but I think social media has something to to blame for that because everybody sees everybody doing amazing things on Instagram or on Facebook, so it is kind of. I mean, Instagram in particular, is just this place to flex and show what you have. Like, look at my watch or look at where I've been today or look what I'm doing, look what I've made. And it's very much a, an egotistical kind of self-masturbatory. That's probably the best word I've ever said on here. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. <laughs> Not as good as Flaneur, but yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> but, but it is that kind of thing is where everybody about. wants to, to show off. So mm. I, I, you kind of have to keep it with the Joneses almost. For sure, but I think again it, it comes back to the the difference in in small time and large time culture, which is um, people I think would be less boastful because they have to back their shit up because you can't just brag about something because the next day they'll be like, all right, let's see you let's see you do it. Whereas you can flex on Instagram all day long and no one's ever going to actually. You never have to back that up. You never have to prove you can do it, right? So again, mm-hmm. like being part of a a non culture, which is what we seem to be in now, allows you to to be self-masturbatory mm-hmm. yeah you can you can get a good angle and no one's ever going to really question it yeah you know get the lighting right you know get your hands in the right position um sorry what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> well you've got a point <laughs> and i do not as big as they say um but yeah when uh what you're, you're... <laughs> right, it's already descended into it's a, it's a pornography. That's what. It yeah, is. Well, this is inevitable. It's inevitable. With the drunk, with the drunken. I might, I might start just a whole new brand, Drunken Odin. I am starting to do. like this idea. We, we, yeah. we need to brainstorm here. We'll do this. We'll do this. Um, but I, I love, I love this bit um, in that that bit that you just read out, Matthias. Um, because yeah, he's all about common sense and so on. But and he talks about knowledge and how like knowledge is pretty much the best thing you can have. But also, don't be like bragging about your knowledge. Because I mean, as we see in some of the myths, someone will brag about the knowledge, and someone will call them on it, and then all of a sudden they're in like a wisdom off, and whoever loses dies. And it's like, oh, shouldn't have said how wise you were. Now you don't have a head, Which is, <laughs> or someone else is like wearing your head, or they pickled it, or something. Um, <laughs> But my favorite bit, like Dan said, is how uh, it talks about knowledge, but it always errs towards the common sense side because in this day and age, like knowledge is so prevalent and so e- it's sort of easy to come by because of we have the internet, right? Mm-hmm. And so this this strange, we're sort of conditioned to believe that having more knowledge or more consideration of things is is in some way better for us. You know, if you have a decision to make, take a long time over it, gather all the knowledge you can, and this is a better way to make a decision. Whereas in actuality, a lot of the time from from my own understanding um the more information you present you you gather to yourself when trying to make a decision the worse that decision ends up being because you get rid of billions of years of evolution and replace it with the internet and all of a sudden your brain goes and can't do it anymore and so i think there's a lot to be learned from from 
not trying to gather too much knowledge now that knowledge is so easy to come by. Whereas back then, knowledge was something you only got from like poetry or books. So you mm-hmm. wanted to take as much of it on and then you can make better decisions. Whereas nowadays, we have so much knowledge, we have too much knowledge that a lot of us can't make decisions anymore mm-hmm. because we're paralyzed, because you can't make any choice without being confronted with a thousand other options and you don't know enough to know whether they're good options or not and so you make terrible decisions all the time or at least i do so (laughs) you had to rely on you're making a really good point i mean we call this the information age and obviously um what we're dealing with this is a lot of disinformation a lot of uh misinformation a lot Mm -hmm. of uh you know fucking about with your (laughs) information basically for sure yeah for sure and and that is incredibly confusing, right? Because um, and, and especially also if if uh, you you find yourself attaching uh, if you attach yourself to something that you perceive as dependable sources of information, and um, and all of a sudden these these de- so called dependable sources of information uh, it takes you in like the direction of bullshit, mm-hmm. and like, I mean you know, the mess that we're in in this country right now is a great wow. example of that. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, like the direction of bullshit is an excellent uh, like for the zeitgeist of the whole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I spent some time in the direction of bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I I agree. I agree. I I I know that that old saying like knowledge is power. And um, my my favorite retort to that ever is the idea that yeah, knowledge is power. But the minute you understand how a placebo works, it stops working. So all of a sudden, a drug you could take that would cure you no longer can cure you because you understand that it's a placebo. So in this situation, knowledge is not power. Knowledge has has broken you or at least made you unable to heal. So I think that's a, a lovely analogy for the idea that more knowledge isn't necess- or more information certainly isn't necessarily useful or a good thing. Like our ancestors knew one thing, and that was they didn't have as much knowledge, but they got by 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 understanding how things worked mm-hmm. uh, not necessarily understanding all the governs of, of, of what was going on behind it they just knew if they did this this would happen they didn't need to necessarily know why people specialized in their own little area i guess as well you know you'd Ooh, have that's true you'd have your, your blacksmith or the the medicine man I, I assume and and whatever else whereas now it's kind of everybody wants to do everything mm. and if you can't you just go on youtube and youtube yeah. tells you how to do it yeah and then it <laughs> blows up <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> no it's true i mean that that's a, that's also a very good point um i think we're all trying to basically reach over too much mm-hmm. and 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 collect uh you know too many skills yeah um but it's also what we also have is of course a a, a world where you're being uh, basically prodded in an, uh, and and told that you that you need to be able to uh be this like very perfect full human being with <laughs> you need to be a scholar and a mechanic yes. and uh, <laughs> married before dude, 25 or you get fucking cinnamon <laughs> you gotta be married before 25 god forbid if it's before 30 because oh oh the peppers come out <laughs> it, it's true right because you get confronted with all these i guess like you keep we keep saying about social, social media and so on uh, kind of beats you over the head with your own inadequacy constantly and mm-hmm. all of a sudden you can be fantastic at something and flip on social media like oh my jujitsu chokes aren't up to scratch oh i'm a failure and you're like what yeah. are you talking about you're a freaking <laughs> yeah you know absolutely yeah. it's, it's it has its good sides and it has its bad sides to it Matthias, do you want to carry on yeah i just uh speaking of oh. jujitsu uh oh. did any of you see that the dave mustaine uh just became a jujitsu master Who's, I did not. Who? You, D- Dave Mustaine, the 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 head guy of Megadeth. I, uh, I'm sorry. God damn it! Do you don't know who Megadeth? Are? <laughs> I know. I I I know who Megadeth are. I'm just not. My rock music doesn't tend to go that heavy. This is very ironic for a conversation about knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> what did we just say? <laughs> well, knowledge is good. I mean, to be fair, he, he was the guy who got kicked out of Metallica. So, you know. This... He also has had like 50 years to do anything he wants to do because he wrote mm-hmm. Symphony of Destruction and now doesn't have to do anything, presumably. Just play that one song once every four years. 
That is that is uh, yeah. a yeah, nice big uh, Megadeth fan. I'm not a big Megadeth fan. Though. Not a big. Oh, he's only purple belt. My Mike is telling us purple not a master belt. Yet. Oh, Christ! <laughs> I follow like 50 purple belts on Instagram. Everyone's a purple belt. I'm so angry. <laughs> <that I'm laughs> <laughs> sorry um well my bad <laughs> moving on <laughs> um okay so so glad at- we've got someone here to fact check Matthias now because so all this time before we got mike i just assumed everything he told me was real i, I just go around regurgitating everything he says Dan, you you've Dude, just been sum- t- you've just <laughs> summarized <laughs> Havamal. there were no fact checkers <laughs> People like Odin just walked around being like, oh, the moon is chased around the sky by a wolf. And there were no fact checkers. They were like, oh, bloody hell, I guess he's right. (laughs) Well, yeah, that's a very good point. Also, dude, I've been telling you for ages that I'm full of shit. You know this. I know. I just trust you too much. (laughs) You've been primed. Okay, so. um, (laughs) um, More Odin. Yes. Stanza 13. um, The forgetfulness heron. It's uh, called Who Hovers Over Ale Drinking. He steals a man's mind. With this bird's uh, feathers, I was fettered in the court of Gunlath. Uh, so this is a awkward uh, uh, reference to uh, the myth where Odin steals the meat of poetry. Apparently, there are you know, more levels to it than than what we are otherwise getting in the in the extant stories. Uh-huh. So this is a reference to something about where he he apparently got so drunk or uh, something that, that 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 you know he couldn't get out of there. <laughs> So I, I think that's such a beautiful way to put it as well, just having your mind stolen. Because right. I know st- I've drank a lot sometimes and it does feel like it's not me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's because last time your brain was literally leaking out. Well, of yeah, there is that. <laughs> well, I mean, my brain just goes, that's it, I'm out, slam. And then... oh. <laughs> okay, so to the next one. Drunk I was. I was more than drunk at Wise Fialas. Uh, that's the best about... Uh, ale drinking that afterwards every man gets his mind back again <laughs> <laughs> that's the best thing as soon as it's over yeah. well there's usually some suffering in between <laughs> <laughs> that is true yes silent and thoughtful a prince's son should be and bold and fighting cheerful and merry every man should be until he comes to death the cowardly man thinks he'll live forever if he keeps away from fighting but old age won't grant him a truce, even if spears spare him. The fool stares when he comes on a visit. He mutters to himself or hovers about. But it's all about uh, up with him if he gets a swig of drink. Uh, the man's mind is exposed. Only that man who wanders widely and has journeyed a great deal knows what sort of mind each man controls. He who's sharp in his wits. Let no man hold unto the cup, but drink mead in moderation. Let him say what's necessary or be silent. No man will scold you because you go off early to bed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, no, this, that, that's the thing that's changed. I feel like mm-hmm. if you're like, okay, I'm done now, guys, see ya. Then everybody is like, what? Like, come on. Like, yeah, are you? Like, <laughs> yeah absolutely. I, I, I I guess maybe I've forgotten how much of this poem was was just telling you that drinking is awesome, but also it's not that awesome, but it is great, but it's not that great, and you should go to bed. There's <laughs> a lot Boris of Johnson. There's a lot of it. I think it's in in, in keeping with his, uh, his his getting more more drunk. It's like it definitely his, his is. stuff is like bad for you, but it's also kind of awesome. <laughs> so good. And this one time I got so drunk, the heron stole my mind, and then I was trapped in the court of the <laughs> Uh, it's de- I mean, it's definitely he's he's a drunkard. Yep, it's, it's almost advice you can't follow as well because we've all been there and gone. You know, I'm gonna have, I'll have one, I'll have yeah. one or two, yeah. and it's like take it easy. But you know, ten, twelve pints later, you're falling over mm-hmm, in your head mm-hmm. or whatever else you get up to. Absolutely, you, you get caught by the moment, by mm-hmm. by the company and everything, and by the beer. Um, mm. And all of a sudden, you're yep. No, I I, I know. At least we, we get a decent insight into the, the 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 value of drinking culture. At least back then, I mean, if, if some if, things haven't if, changed. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it's a European thing as well, right? Like that's we you know you, we settle a place. The first thing we do is try and make magic mead. That's pretty much how we roll. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, but 
it, again, like, because this is such an important poem, if this much, what, there's 164 standards, you say, and we're up to, like, number, what, now, 24 or something? Yeah, only um, 19, actually. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> we're going to be here a while, my man. <laughs> um, but, okay, so we're, like, 19 in and what, like, half of that has been about drinking pretty much of, yes. like the most important of the poems is just like yes. a huge sections of it are just about drinking i mean it shows how much that was part of the culture which i think is is interesting um absolutely yeah no you, you, you're totally right um and and it goes on a little bit not so much about drinking but you know don't overeat is the next answer the greedy well, man unless he guards against this tendency will eat himself into lifelong trouble no. Um, often when he comes among the wise, the foolish man, a man's stomach is laughed at. Um, number 21, cattle know when they ought to go home and then they leave the pasture. But the foolish man never figures the measure of his own stomach. He's a wretched man of evil disposition, the one who makes fun of everything. He doesn't know the one thing he ought to know, that he is not devoid of or false. Oh. Yes. The stupid just man. Odin fat shaming people. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like Sad a little. Uh, <laughs> the foolish man's belly. <laughs> oh, we're the laughing stock. But I imagine, uh, you know, back then as well, it, you, it, it probably would have been unusual to see somebody quite overweight. I yeah. guess, you know, most people are living off what they can make and, and they're going to ration out what, what they have, especially when you're farming your own. Yeah, your crop. So I guess when you see somebody who is overindulgent, it's gonna stand out and probably be poked for that. Well, I mean, there, there could be many reasons that that would happen. Um, uh, I, I mean, so first of all, uh, we have to consider that, like, just a hundred years ago, people didn't, you know, reach the same level of uh, um, uh, fat coat. Uh, what do you call it? Coated body with fat as we do today right i feel um, like we've all just suddenly started tiptoeing <laughs> <laughs> well I my, mean, mouth, my mouth's going clammy and i'm like Ugh. i i have uh I, like i i have definitely um uh, put on a lot of weight myself <laughs> like, oh i i i've definitely put some <laughs> but no i don't i don't want to i don't want to offend anybody but uh but that's like like you know with the access we have now to different kinds of um, uh, nutrients um, yeah, and, you know, sugars primarily, right? Mm -hmm. we, we are getting, yeah. getting a lot fatter than we used to as human beings in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that also means that back then, somebody who was considered overweight would actually perhaps not be that particularly no, absolutely overweight not. in, in no. modern times. Um, and yeah, it's, all, but, it's all relative to yeah. the time period that you look yeah. at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I apologize if that came out awkward. <laughs> just... I, I think it probably it also, in, in a way, relates to um, a difference in our approach to abundance, maybe, over the last thousand years. Uh, maybe maybe fueled by living in a capitalist society or more like, stringently so, insofar as these days our approach to abundance is to hoard, right? If you if you have too much of something, you gather it and you keep it and you put it in a bank account and you let it grow. I mean, that's what you do no matter what it is. I mean, just look at people stockpiling over the, over lockdown, right? You, that's mm -hmm. how we treat things. Whereas um, a different approach to abundance is, is uh, which I think is probably more prevalent in, in more tribal society is that if you have an abundance of something, you share it because you have too much. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it is more useful to you to feed everybody with your overabundance of food than stick it in a warehouse for it to rot and so on, just because that way you'll have some extra, which seems to be our sort of default attitude today, no matter what it is, even if it's attention or, uh, or like booze, you have so much of it, you store it away over there. Whereas actually what's much more fun or I think healthier is when you, when you come into an abundance of something is to give it away to other people. That way your culture um, or, or your, or your, um, excuse me, the society you're living in benefits on the whole everyone benefits from your abundance and then if you don't have any of something chances are you will benefit when someone else has an abundance of that mm -hmm. thing so that way you all kind of interrelate and a lot of as you, we saw in the opening stanzas he talks a lot about hospitality and the, the reason why hospitality virtues will will flourish is because it's very useful to me if everyone around me is hospitable just like it's very useful to you if i'm hospitable that works when you have a culture just like 
if you have this attitude of abundance, which is to share when you have too much, that's useful in a small group. Whereas it's not very useful right now. If I have like thousands of pounds, uh, but I'm not around anybody, it's not, not useful to me to give it to someone who lives in Jamaica over there to go and just buy some booze with, because that doesn't benefit me. And so we have mm-hmm. a very different approach to abundance these days. And I think that that carries off in, 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 in um, how people's attitudes towards overeating would be, because if someone is overeating back then, you'd be like, okay, so you have loads of food and the rest of us are starving. This makes you even more of a dick than you would otherwise be, yeah, you know, absolutely. because... And I, th- I think food supplies were, were limited as well. It's like now, as long as you've got the money, you can go out at whatever time of night and you can go and buy something to eat. Whereas if you've farmed your crops and you've got, you know, your stores full, if you eat all that in three months, well, you fucked. Yeah. So you, you, you can't, you almost can't overeat. And I guess even, you know, if they did have a lot of stock, some of them probably did get quite plump if it was a good, if it was like, you know, they had a good harvest. Well, yeah. And no, you're both making very good points here. I, um, I'm very sure that, you know, a lot of this like, you know, ridicule of, of, um, of people who are overweight in, in those, uh, much earlier societies did come down to like a social function Mm. um uh, 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 that that basically stipulates you should not overeat because uh you should share if you have more than enough Mm. um for 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 different reasons and yeah this on a local level in that local community this would be very apparent um that 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 uh, you know resources needed to be shared more because uh, uh, people will have much more of an understanding. We're all in this together. We're in the same boat here. Um, and yeah, I think it's you should share because you don't know when you're going to be the person who needs. So it could be, mm-hmm. you know, next year your your mm-hmm. crops might not flourish. So you're going to be the one who's going to need. So if you're greedy one year, the next year people might be like, oh, well, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's a, that, that, that's, a, that's a lesson that um, plenty of uh, indigenous societies around the world uh, have been teaching for a, a millennia. There's a, there's a great um, story from the Diné, um, the Native Americans in the American Southwest, um, also known as Navajo. Uh, they, uh, they have a story about this. There's a, there's a, a, there's a place called, uh, I think it's like directly translated to something like shits and tents. <laughs> and this this comes down to like so so uh, this elder uh, he interpreted the place name once uh, and uh, and he explained how um, this came from a situation where there was like w- one group of people in the village they were uh, they had an abundance of food and uh, another village uh, the, the neighboring village they ran out of food and. Um, and then the neighbors they they went to they, they went to that village full 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 of food and they were like um, guys uh, want to share some of that and then they all got like greedy and it was like no we're we're hoarding this and everything and so it came to a standoff where the other guys uh, uh, they 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 basically made them stay in their houses so you couldn't come out. And so it's uh, it started like having to shit and eat in the same place. That's sort of like the moral of the story. I'm not telling it particularly well because I don't remember it that well. But the moral of the story is basically that they they end up shitting where they're eating, right? And mm-hmm. uh, and mm-hmm. that's that's part of like the uh, the 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 idea that that basically if you if you are too greedy um, and you don't share your resources, then then you also um, end up uh, contaminating basically what you have. Right. That's it's a basic that's... function for even animals. No, not mm-hmm. to not to do that, don't they? they? You know, they they have a, a separate area. The you know, shit where they eat. It's kind of a very famous thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Should we should we carry on, or we will be here? Yes. All night? Not that I'm going to complain about. <laughs> okay. So which one? Yeah. Let me see. Um, the stupid man stays awake all night and worries about everything. He's tired out when the morning comes and all's just as bad as it was. The foolish man thinks that everyone is his friend who laughs with him. He doesn't notice, though, that they uh, say nasty things about him when he sits among the wise. 
That's just kind of just to jump back, I know we I know we keep yeah. stopping, but I think that one about not worrying is so so beautiful and so true today and now as much as any other time because you know people do sit and worry all night about something that they can't possibly change, mm-hmm. and it's and then you like say in the morning you're tired and you're even less equipped to to tackle the challenge. You most things aren't going to f- be fixed by just sitting and worrying and contemplating and thinking about. Yeah, no, I mean, so the thing is with that one, I think uh, he's not telling us that we we shouldn't be vigilant about uh, certain problems or issues that we, we need to handle. And he's not telling us that we should just be some uh, completely brain dead idiot going through life being like, oh, Mary, la, 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 I don't care about anything. <laughs> but what he is saying is that uh, there is no need to worry. There's no need to, to, to let your mind be consumed by fears or, or, or worries about what might happen. <laughs> Deal with what is happening, right? That, that's so, such good advice, I think, all around. Right? Because yeah. so many people just worry about what ifs. And it's there's no need in worrying about what might happen because it might not happen. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and adding to this, we also have a, like a media uh, 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 sort of like situation these days that preys on people's fears Mm -hmm. um you know one thing is to inform people about different things that need to be handled in society something to worry about and so on another thing is this what we're seeing nowadays where we're just being like constantly like you know they're pumping images in our heads of, of like all kinds of things that we need to worry about um according to them right like uh, yeah. If it's fucking, I don't know, kill a Asian killer hornets that show up in Washington State, for instance, mm-hmm. everybody's like freaking out and it's like guys that they, they live in very specific environments. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's like, you know, uh, it, it does it, have things. <laughs> it, it helps when you when you live in a in like a fatalistic society, right? Where you if you genuinely believe in the norms and in the fates um it's very unclear why you'd worry about anything if you if you think your fate is written then why would you stay up at night worrying about something because you actually can't do anything about it it's, it's going to happen to you one way or the other mm-hmm. so you can see doubly why odin would be confused by why people would do that absolutely yeah oh we have a, we have a uh, uh, comment um uh frederick garborg uh sounds uh swedish um says the thing i take away from the fat shaving stanza is that it, it reinforces just how vain the norse were and i think you're totally right about that they were they were some dandies they they um i, I think the oldest uh, uh uh tool for ironing clothes that has been found is actually from from the oh. Norse world yeah so <laughs> i love this i i really get off on every time there's a discovery made that shows that like the the norse um were kind of camp and didn't really like fighting or were smaller than you might think and like <laughs> to comb their hair and stuff just because it's just so beautiful because there's such a subculture these days of people trying to be as as manly as they possibly can by embodying uh, just a nonsense yes. uh, <laughs> like people who've come up with the idea that like in inher- to embody some kind of viking virtues involves having a certain hairstyle and some muscles and it's it's deeply unclear why these people <laughs> are so like insecure that they think this is this is how one goes about embodying a long dead culture. Um, and so I love it. I love it that every time that a story is like, uh, actually, they were super camp. So yeah. <laughs> to, to jump on that, it's I, I notice it, having a clothing company, we get people who comment and say, if we, if we do something and we don't release in a triple XL, we usually get someone who will comment and say, why don't you do things in Viking sizes? Um, and it's like, <laughs> what? 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 What do you mean? <laughs> Five foot two and emaciated. <laughs> exactly. It's like such a, it's this thing of this modern idea though, the kind of like, it's this big, huge kind of um, per human. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, that's uh, true. I mean, I, I like, I, I get this too, because I'm a relatively tall guy with broad shoulders and people are always like, oh, you look like a Viking. <laughs> uh, like actually, you know, my Viking ancestors, they were like, you know, midgets compared to me, guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> when when they like 
five ten ish. Yes, they were like which, yeah, which is my height. Thanks. <laughs> Right, mid- I've been called a midget all my life. <laughs> are you <laughs> serious? <laughs> all, 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 all my best friends are, are like, I think my best friend's six three. His brother was also one of my really good friends. He's like six four, and a couple of my other friends are all you know six foot plus. So I'm always the short one, and I don't think five ten's particularly small. But it's not particularly small. I mean, I I'm 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 six one. So You're taller like, than me. Everyone assumes I'm like six foot six. Oh, <laughs> not like, I'm, I'm short than Dan is. <laughs> so that's why, av- that's why he hangs out with me. I, I'm, say, yeah. I'm pretty sure that I am just like average for Scandinavia. Yeah, you guys are tall. Mm-hmm. But the Dutch the, are even taller, though. The, yeah, the, the thing that I, I always find interesting about this, not I know that we have to get on with the actual Odin, but um, is there's this bizarre tendency that that this group of people to which we are sort of indirectly referencing um they get it in their head that they they either represent through i don't know ancestry or something uh or through choice like a, a culture and that that culture represents a, a system of values that were like being big and strong and masculine and whatever and then when you point out stuff like for example let's say the let's let's for the sake of this to say that the Vikings were super camp and actually were much more into doing their makeup and their hair than into raiding. Let's just say that is true. And then all of a sudden you have these people who have decided they're part of a culture without understanding what the culture is. And then when they find out what the culture is, they have a choice, which is either like accept that and be like, okay, what do you do now? Do you now do your hair and makeup because you're part of this culture? And so you sort of have to live by its standards Mm -hmm. or do you ditch the culture? And they do neither. What they do is just refuse to accept that oh, that was what the culture is. They stick the fingers in their ears and yeah. uh, na, la 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 la. Which is, I, I had a conversation with a guy on Facebook um, today. I think it was, he was saying about the Blood Eagle. So I was like, look, the likelihood of the Blood Eagle didn't happen the way that they, they especially they show it on Vikings. Um, you know, it's pretty much medically impossible. I linked our podcast, you know, where we spoke about it with somebody who studied it in depth. And he was like, Nah, not listening to it. Um, <laughs> like, pretty much, it's like I don't believe it. No one will ever know what they actually did. It probably did happen. I'm like, no, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm giving you evidence of us, you know, an interview with somebody who has literally spent hours and hours of hours researching this topic. He's looked at everything. I've spoken to like paramedics. Talking he's, with like, yeah, m- this m- is his specialist subject, no, and he's like, is it no? I might like, give me your. I was facts. like, "There's no, there's no reasoning with you. Then, then there's no outcome here no. because you just kind of attached to what you think, and then that's that's it. And mm-hmm. it, it kind of like, what do you do in that situation? Well, I mean, this is a great example of what we were talking about just before. Like uh, somebody is trying to make sense of their world, right? They're they're being pumped full of information. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They've settled on something that that seems reasonable to them for some reason or another. Maybe it's just simply because they they did that's like that feeds into their wishful thinking about Vikings or whatever. And then there's like a bunch of idiots uh, on a podcast with beard that are like, actually, I'm a professor of this and that. And like, yeah, I I get it. I get why somebody would be like no (laughs) yeah because like (laughs) for sure but that's why it's so weird that people have to try and pin their own value system on 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 extinct cultures Mm -hmm. just just accept that you quite like being a large muscular man with interesting hair and tattoos that's fine it doesn't also have to have existed a thousand years ago and being a primary like you don't have to be blood related to that like it's fine to be into stuff Mm -hmm. because you like it 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 doesn't have to also be some freaking all-encompassing culture that has existed since the dawn of time it's just oh goes back to the guild yeah (laughs) yeah we've linked back no, I, I agree completely. That's, that's that's a really that's a really good point. Like, you know what? You can be uh, as you know as interested in being a, a a big dude with tattoos and beard and a mohawk or whatever the hell uh, without mm-hmm. that having to be anything else than I kind of like that look. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely, <laughs> but, exactly. So if it turns out the Vikings all had pink hair and like shaved their pubes. <laughs> then it doesn't mean that you have to then do that because you think you're a Viking. And it also doesn't mean that that affects you in any way because you're not. A Viking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. Do you want to carry on, Matthias? Yes, let's uh, carry on a little bit. 
Come on. Okay, so um, dun dun dun. We have this stupid man who stays awake all night. We have a <laughs> foolish man who thinks that everyone is his friend. Um, the foolish man thinks that everyone is his friend who laughs with him, but then he finds when he comes to the assembly that he has few to speak on his behalf. Oh. The foolish man thinks he knows everything. If he cowers in a corner, he doesn't know what he can say in return if people ask him questions. The foolish man in company does uh, best if he stays silent. No one will know that he knows nothing um, unless he talks too much. But the man who knows nothing does not know even if he is talking too much. Wow, that's Odin who figured out confirmation bias here. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Also yeah. very ironic that Odin's been like, oh, the foolish man is who talks too much. <laughs> anyway, stanza 95. <laughs> True. Very, very good. Don't point. drink too much or talk too much. Shut up, Odin. <laughs> Why is he esteems himself who knows how to question and how to answer as well? The sons of men cannot keep secret what's going around about folks. So that's talking shit about each other, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Quite enough baseless blather comes from the man never silent. A quick tongue, unless it's held in check, often talks itself into trouble. Oh, not like that. No. Into a laughing stock no man should make another if he comes to visit the household. Many a man seems wise if he isn't asked questions and he manages to lurk unscathed. So he's, he keeps repeating himself this, this, you know, yeah, basically saying, mm. shut up. That's really <laughs> what he's saying. <laughs> just, just be quiet. That's not um, good advice for a podcast. No, I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm like, right. so, is he talking to me? You know, <laughs> like, what's going on? See, I, I feel like so many people have read it, uh, you know, read a lot of this and gone, that's, that speaks directly to me. Maybe I need to do this. <laughs> I'm this fool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So why is that man seems who tr- retreats when one guest is insulting another? Oh, the man who mocks at a feast doesn't know for sure whether he shoots off his mouth amid enemies. This is really interesting. So why is that man seems who retreats when one guest is insulting another? He's basically saying here that people are like, I'm, I'm getting out of here. When yeah. the fighting starts, are the smart ones. That's very <laughs> un- Which is very kind of against this idea of this warrior culture that wants to jump in there and have mm-hmm. a big fight and fisticuffs wherever possible. Mm. Yeah, no, that's really that's really interesting. Yeah, okay, it so, kind of involves saving the fighting to you know pick choose your battles is what it's choose your battles like. absolutely. On the one hand, yeah. if people are bickering, get out of there. But on the other hand, like death's going to get you anyway. So yeah, if it, maybe sometimes if it's not your fight, you don't have to to uh, get involved. Yeah, goes on to talk about many men are devoted to one another and yet they fight at feasts amongst men there will always be strife guests squabbling with guests so he's also saying men are douchebags um Um, we can all agree about that i mean we've all probably (laughs) fallen out with a good friend when you've had a bit too much to eat and drink and it's just it just happens yeah you know it's like you say you lose your mind and it's you you bicker over something silly yep they eat too much i mock their foolish belly and then the heron takes my mind (laughs) every day (laughs) an early meal a man should usually eat unless he is visiting friends he sits and gazes round uh, hungrily acts as if he's starving and doesn't make conversation it's a great detour to a bad friend's house even though he lives on the route. But to a good friend's house, the ways lie straight, even though he lives far off. A man must go. He must not remain a guest always in one place. The loved man is loathed if he, if he sits too long in someone else's hall. Or a farm of your own is better, even if small. Everyone's someone at home, Though he has two goats and a twig roofed a room, that is still better than begging. I like that um, one. That's good. Yeah, that that's yeah. a really nice one. It does, you, it, so everybody always wants more and more, and sometimes they, they don't appreciate what they have. And like you say what that, some having something is better than nothing. 
I think also in this, this you know, he's yeah. saying um, being self-reliant is better than, than having mm -hmm. to beg. Uh, mm -hmm. That comes also right after. The next one is a farm of your own is better, even if small. Everyone's someone at home. A man's heart bleeds when he has to beg for food for himself at mealtimes, right? So mm -hmm. that's sort of it goes hand in hand with the other one saying yeah. basically, well, it's better to be you know self-sufficient and having to beg um definitely i like that from his weapons on open land no man should step one pace away this is one of the americans really like i've found <laughs> um <laughs> it's like well, that that's like the second amendment right there <laughs> okay. i'm looking forward to this one let's have it for it can't be known for certain out on the road when a man might have need of his spear. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see why. Um, I never found a generous man nor one so unstingy with food that he wouldn't accept what was given or one so open-handed with uh, possessions that he disliked a gift when offered. So, yeah. I, I, I like this again, like a hark back to the hospitality vibe and the, the idea of, of, of being able to give a gift being, you know, as important as, as receiving them. I really, I really love that. Yeah. There, there's and something it's... very nice about giving as well. I know mm. I almost like giving a good gift more than receiving. Mm. Um, I know when it comes to Sarah's birthday or Christmas, I tend to spend a lot more and it's not because I want to show off, but I just really enjoy giving something nice and seeing her happy. You selfish Nef bastard. <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> giving these gifts to make yourself feel good. That's it. But I, I think there is, you know, you do get a nice feeling from looking after people, or, you know, hmm. buying something for someone and giving a gift and seeing somebody else happy from, from your actions. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So I never found a generous man. No, no, that was the one I just read. Okay. His piled up property, a man shouldn't go without. What you meant for those you love is often saved for those you hate. Much goes worse than is expected. Um, so there. <laughs> Bloody hell, that came out of nowhere, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, just like with weapons also and... Never and, save anything. You'll probably die and your enemies will take it. <laughs> yes. This with, is his what, depression stage of his drunkenness. Yeah. <laughs> we all go through it. What's the point anyway? Uh, <laughs> I've never known anyone. Gifts. Oh, sorry. Um, no. Go ahead. Oh, okay. oh I, I had nothing of value to say. Okay. <laughs> well, Odin has a bit. So with weapons and gifts, friends should gladden one another, those which can be seen on them. Mutual givers and receivers are friends for the longest if the friendship keeps going well. To his friend, a man should be a friend and repay gifts with gifts. Laughter, men should accept with laughter, but return deception for a lie. To his friend, a man should be a friend and to his friend's friend too. Uh, but no man should be a friend to the friend of his enemy. This reminds me of that e episode from The Office where Dwight is like, well, Jim is his own worst enemy, and Jim's enemy is my friend. So, oh, oh but if he's his own worst enemy, he is also my enemy. And like, he just like ramples into a, a, a dark hole there. Um, but yeah, so uh, so... I, I think what we're hearing here is a little bit of loyalty and all this stuff, mm. but he also does say that um, laughter men should accept with laughter, but return deception for lie. Mm. Uh, so, so basically, he's saying here too that if somebody's fucking with you, you're welcome to fuck right back at them, or mm. however that works. Yeah, in language like to a strange extent. I, I sort of agree with this. Um, I mean, I am all for, uh, you know, acting in a way that you think is correct, even if people um, are not doing that. You know, it doesn't make it any better if they've been a douchebag, you know, how to be a douchebag back. So you should still always act in a way that you think is whatever correct way to act. But then there's this, this strange um, aspect, and I don't know if this is a modern thing or not, but um, because we, maybe because there are more people or, or whatever, there seems to be more of a prevalence of the type of person who will take advantage of you. And the only way to stop people taking advantage of you a lot of the time is essentially game theory, right? You have to, you have to call them on it at some point. And if you are always acting 
politely or respectfully to somebody who never is, sooner or later, you have to prove that you can actually stand up for yourself in some way, shape or form, because otherwise they will just push you around forever. Mm -hmm. And and therefore, we end up with a a lot of people in our culture who get downtrodden because they are simply too nice. Um, and they've 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 been raised in such a way that's taught them to always uh, act in a way that you know makes you proud or whatever according to these values. And and the problem is that sometimes you then get sucked into people who will just use that to abuse you. So um, I think there's a lot to be said for you know give people a chance, but then if they're going to be terrible to you, just be terrible back. And then lo and behold, they won't be terrible to you. And also they probably stop being terrible to other people because they've learned their lesson. You but so I think some people never learn the lessons are. Well, then you just give them the spear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I I like that. That's that's a that's a great note to end on. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, you heard it here first. Odin's <laughs> drunk and kill your enemies <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to carry on, Matthias? Are we? Yes, uh, we can. We can take a couple more. I, I, so, I mean, this we're we're not even like halfway through the no. poem yet. So. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, to a friend, a friend, blah blah blah. You know, if you're a friend whom you really trust and from whom you want nothing but good, you should mix your soul with his and exchange gifts. Go and see him often. If you have another uh, whom you don't trust. But from whom you want nothing but good. Speak fairly to him, but think falsely and repay treachery with a lie. So again, mm. you can be a dick, apparently. Like that's mm-hmm. uh that's that's okay here. Um just uh being uh, you know a false friend, basically. Again, mm. concerning the one you don't trust and whose mind you suspect. You should laugh with him and disguise your thoughts. A <laughs> gift should be repaid with a like one. <laughs> so, yeah. I feel this is some contradictory information we're getting from Odin. I swear if you stand us back, he was like, oh, people, people, an idiot is he who thinks that when people laugh with them, that he is wise. And then like two minutes later, he's like, also laugh with everyone. They'll think you're wise. And they're afraid. That is just <laughs> what he's on about. He's drunk is what he is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and now we come to the one uh, that, uh, that at least in some uh, fringe scholarship, I think has been, been considered sort of the, uh, quote gay stanza so stanza 47 i was young once i traveled alone then i found myself going astray rich i thought myself when i met someone else actually it says some uh, an other man uh, for man is the joy of man uh so uh, so this has actually been interpreted uh, in 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 queer theory as a as hmm. as a, a a reference to to some kind of uh amorous relationship among men i feel um, like the the earlier standards were gayer oh really <laughs> yeah well he was talking about like oh you get a good friend oh yeah you visit him often yeah you make him happy that seemed a lot like <laughs> that was like two or three stanzas back i mean yeah. i'd like uh, <laughs> about give, give him plenty of gifts laugh with him visit him often yes <laughs> i was already getting gay vibes from odin i reckon odin was definitely pansexual right i mean he definitely had sexual sure. swans and things and eels. yeah no yeah no he's uh, one of my favorite things you've got a whole mythos of, of of gods and creatures just all into fucking but like the idea that two of the men could have sex is apparently <sighs> it was like a <laughs> it's like oh no <laughs> that's oh, it yeah penises. It, it's so you know like loki obviously has, has sex with a horse yeah. and all the all these different things and then like you say the idea of two men is just you yeah, just no, hear, you hear like viking bros heads just literally explode it's like yeah. fucking get over it that's not very manly <laughs> which one <laughs> okay so um let's see uh yeah, then we get to generous and brave men live the best. Seldom do they harbor sorrow. But the cowardly man is afraid of everything. The miser always worries when he gets gifts. I mean, this is also, this is perhaps a lesson to the to those Viking bros whose heads explode, um, <laughs> right? I mean, if, the cowardly man is afraid of everything. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, without a yeah. doubt. Without a doubt. I mean, I think, I think that's a lovely... I think that's one of my favorite of all the stanzas because 
you know, we were talking earlier about ancient value systems and how they tie into modern life. And I think that the key one that everyone takes away from like, like Viking values is, is strength. It's always strength and it's always courage. And one of the issues we have in our modern life is it's quite difficult. You know, earlier we spoke about blessed be the people who actually receive a guest because you have an opportunity to show how virtuous you are by being a good host. But if one of your values is strength and courage, in this day and age, it's not it's not obvious how you display strength and courage and bravery when there aren't people invading your farm and there aren't wolves and there aren't there's not a lot. I mean, what can you do? You can go do like strong man and pick up stones and stuff. I mean, it's 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 cool, but it's not really it's not the same thing because you're very much like putting yourself in a situation where you have to be strong in order to prove how strong you are, which is kind of lame compared to actually having to summon up strength to defend yourself and your honor or whatever. So I, I just love that this, this stanza, it starts talking about, you know, strength in a, in a very different way and being like, you know, um, cowards are people that are, that are scared all the time. Strong people aren't scared. So how do you be strong in the modern world? Just don't be fucking scared of everything. Don't mm-hmm. listen to the, the news telling you to be scared about this. Don't listen to the people telling you to be anxious about that. Just fuck what everyone else thinks. Just be strong and content in yourself, not scared of what's going on out there. And then you're displaying strength um, in a very meaningful modern context because it can be hard to learn how to be strong in, in, in a modern world. And I think being content with your own vulnerability and so being aware of your own vulnerability, but not being scared of it is, 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 is a modern form of strength. And I, I take that from that stance. I think. Absolutely. It's, and I, I think it. to go back to, to what we said earlier, linking it back to the guild again, is there's this idea of strength being physical, whereas it doesn't mm. have to be strength no. can just be being you. Being who you are in the face of everybody else and not caring what they think, just doing mm. what you want to do. And that sometimes takes strength. It doesn't have to be physical. Yeah, for sure. I agree very much. Well, I think a lot of when you, well, the way I think about these things is a lot of the time when you're trying to work out what the hell it means to be anything is to look at its antithesis because there's a lot of truth in it. So uh, I think a lot of the time what it means to be strong is to be aware that you're weak and Mm -hmm. not let that change anything. So all the times I've been most brave is when I've been aware of how scared I am and I've done the thing anyway. And the times when I've been most strong is when I've been aware of how weak I feel and I've done it anyway. And and that's, if there's ever like a, a maxim by which to live that like I would stand for and I think the guild stands for and which I took from the ancient values is to not be so confused by uh, like a value or a virtue that like, for example, strength that you're always trying to find something strong to do is go the other way and be like, what's the opposite of this? It's weakness. All right. In which ways am I weak? And therefore how can I be stronger? Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that completely. It's, it's, there's so many types of strength. Absolutely. Um, hmm. Yeah. Matthias, we got, we got some more or, Yes. Okay. How far? So, how far? How far in away? Say what? How far in away? Uh, so we're we're only like a third in through uh, this poem. So uh, <laughs> that's plenty. Okay. More. We'll have to have a return. Yeah, I think yeah. we'll have to have a return for this one. We we'll let's get let's, let's get about halfway or where you feels a good ending point. We can cut it off, make a note, and then next time, yes. Ed, I, Ed, I'm sure when this comes out, people will love for you to return. <laughs> So without a doubt, we will we will have a second episode. Seven hours of Ed wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll take the I'll take the next two because they're really interesting. Okay. Um, uh, so the next one is forty nine. He says, "My clothes I gave out in the field to two wooden men, champions. They thought themselves when they had clothing. The naked man is despised. So this is where Odin is obviously like getting really sloshed. Like he's like." <laughs> I was like getting a dressing up there. <laughs> I like, took all my clothes off. I gave them to the wooden man. <laughs> yeah, <was> like, oh. <laughs> hey, Odin, are you talking about trees? Yeah, I took off my clothes. I hugged them on a tree and then they weren't naked. <laughs> and then then all of a sudden he gets like this moment of clarity uh, because the stands of 50 then goes... The fir tree withers that stands on the top of the hill. Neither bark nor needles protect it. So it is with the man whom no one loves. How should he live for long? So so he's like descended into like this drunken hole when he's like, I'm naked now. And then then, (laughs) 
Mm-hmm. Then he goes on to the this, the man who's not loved. He's, <laughs> he's like a fir tree standing on a hill all alone without shrubbery around it. <laughs> you, could, you could almost see the storyboard of making this into a movie. Like Odin just tearing off on his clothes and be like, now I'm naked. Oh, nobody <laughs> likes the naked man. <laughs> so like he's just so become very self-aware in that moment. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, just someone's just coming up, just draping a cloak over him, like there, there, Odin. So, uh, I think we've all probably water. had that moment as well whilst drinking, where maybe you're doing something stupid and gone, "What the right. fuck am I doing?" Yeah, oh, yeah, yep. Okay. Nope. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so we, yeah. yeah, let's leave it there, um, and we can finish it, finish it next time. This, so this has been a lot of fun. I've got to say, oh, it's, hopefully, it's other brilliant. people think so too. Well, how how could they not enjoy listening to the whitterings of a drunken old man? Um, and also Odin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that humor. Uh, there it is. It was going to show I, up sooner or later. I have that too. <laughs> humor. <laughs> ah, yeah. So let's, yeah, let's wrap this up. Um, let's plug some stuff, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, Mateus, we have a new show-ish maybe come in at some point yeah that's uh that's going to be interesting (laughs) yeah so we we had this idea that we we put a goal on our patreon page that when we reach 100 patrons then we will do a brand new watch along show it will be a weekly episode where me and Mateus will sit down and watch vikings from episode one all the way through to the recent series to the last episode and Week by week, we will watch it and discuss what happens, discuss whether it really happened, give our opinions on what happens. Um, people will be, anybody who supports us on Patreon will be invited to watch it with us. You'll be able to join in the live chat feature and ask your questions, probably to Mateus, about whether stuff actually happened or not. I'm really excited about it. I really hope we get to the goal soon. I, I think that could be so fun to do. Um, I mean, it's it's like that. What is that show called where they sit uh, and they Google just talk Box shit? Is, is the, <laughs> like the British one. Yeah, yeah. there is there's, something quite fun about watching people watch TV. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, I'm very much looking forward to doing that. <laughs> I would love to watch that. that yeah, I, I think there's, there's been many times coming from kind of like my perspective of watching something like Vikings and enjoying it for what it is and knowing it's not 100% accurate, but also wondering what is accurate and what we can take from it that is true. Because without a doubt, they have done some research and some people are real and some things are real. So it would be nice to to have the opportunity to to pick that apart, but also do it in a fun way where it's quite lighthearted. It's like, you know, this episode has been a nice, fun episode where we'll just sit and and have a laugh with people joining in a live chat and and go through it. Can I um, can I jump in every time an extra is just terrible at fighting or just <laughs> stares at the camera and waves his sword around looking terrified because that happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, sure. I would I, love yes, to just like, point, like jump in and be like, look at this guy, look at this guy, he's doing terribly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brilliant. so. so <laughs> So that's our new show. Hopefully, like I say, it's it's a goal on Patreon. So as soon as we get to 100 uh, patrons, that's what we're going to do. I think we're at 65 at the minute. So if you like the idea, please just support us on Patreon. It's Patreon forward slash Naughty Mythology Podcast. It's going to be available to any level. So whether it's the five pound level or the 20 pound level, it doesn't matter. You're still going to get access to that when it does happen. And it will happen at some point. It's just obviously up to people how quickly it happens. Um, Ed, what about you? Have you got anything to plug to to shout out your your Instagrams, the guild? I've sp- <laughs> I've spent this year building a van. Um, I decided to just leave society behind and live in a wagon, and so I have built a guild's wagon that I have just finished constructing. And in honor of one of my books, the Sexy Adventures of Stan Booth. I am going to take this van around on tour uh, called The Sexy Adventures of Van Booth. And I will be <laughs> I'll be doing podcasts. I love your brain. <laughs> like, I, like... <laughs> it's not good it's to live brilliant. in here. It's my, my brain is very much a place to go on a day trip. Um, <laughs> being stuck here, you know, full time is the struggle uh, but, but i'll be um i'll be doing live readings of the sexy adventures of stan booth 
uh, and and uh, excerpts from the Gilsman's Handbook and whatnot. But um, I will be I will be theoretically, depending on COVID, uh, living full time on the road. Uh, on my adventures and I will be visiting your fine self uh, and others. Um, I will be, so if people follow along on my Instagram or something, it's just my name, a gamester, uh, I will put a link up there to whatever, uh, however, what you can keep up with my um, bizarre uh, yet incredibly sexy <laughs> <laughs> adventures. That, that will be so much fun. I can't um, wait for that. I've not told anyone about this. It was only because you asked me if I was plugging anything. So I suppose I might as well do a, a reveal. <laughs> oh, there we go we got an exclusive to be honest that sounds oh, so much that's fun. awesome <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be fantastic i can't wait to show you the the, the guild's wagon it's uh, a mobile guild hall <laughs> it's, it's quite something no that that's brilliant um yeah i can't wait hopefully covid fucks off soon so we can to be honest i was most excited to like getting back to normal but i'm more excited about that now Yes. Well, you'll be one of the first places I, I visit. I mean, I was I was meant to already be with you. I was hoping to be up with you um to do this, to be honest. But obviously, mm-hmm. that has been screwed. But um, no. yeah, as soon as it's uh you know remotely responsible to go gallivanting around the country, I shall be doing. Wonderful. Sounds amazing. Matthias, where can everybody find you? You can always find me on Instagram by my name Matthias Nordvig. Um, yeah, that that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so you can follow the podcast at, at Naughty Mythology Podcast on Instagram, where Mike does the weekly post for the episode, puts up some supplementary images to go along with it. Uh, like I say, you've got our Patreon, which is Patreon forward slash Naughty Mythology Podcast. You can follow me at Daniel underscore Fire and One. And obviously, if you enjoy the show, please leave a five star rating and a positive review because it helps people find it. And obviously, if people are umming and ahhing whether to listen, obviously, your review might just tip them over to enjoying this wonderful episode. That's it. 